today we're drywalling the garage. Well, we kind of already did it. But we're gonna show you how Nick did it because even if you're a beginner, you can totally DIY hanging the drywall, finishing the drywall, and have it look good, right? Absolutely. Because all your 18 years of experience taught you one thing. If you screw up drywall, you can always fix it. So the first thing you wanna do whenever you start a drywall project is prep the space. You can't just throw drywall butt on any ceiling or wall. You gotta make sure that there's no screws or nails in your studs. You also wanna check if you have insulation, if there's anything sticking out, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's stapled up. And then another very important thing is One of the most important things you wanna make sure of is that your ceiling is level and that it's not wavy. Otherwise, you're gonna notice it, it's gonna be a terrible finish. So, get an eight foot level, put it up, and make sure you're good to go. In our case, we had to use furring strips. But, now that everything is perfect, we can get started. Okay, so, I've already essentially gone through all the studs, I've hammered in any staples that were sticking out, I've unscrewed any screws that were out, Pulled out any nails that were there, and don't let your contractor hammer those nails in. They, that saves time, just pull them out. Um, any protrusions can poke through on the drywall and also just give you an uneven surface. So you wanna make sure that the walls are clear of obstructions. Next, this is very important. Um, so ceilings are always hung first. When you hang the walls after you hang a ceiling, the walls are also giving the ceilings additional support because with gravity, that's, the, that's what's gonna give first. Um, I also screw everything. A lot of people tend to nail the perimeter because it's a little faster and nails are less expensive than screws. Just screw everything. If you ever walk through a house and you see those little circular humps that are random every once in a while, that is called a nail pop. Now to avoid that, don't use nails. Now a lot of people say if you nail around the perimeter and you tape your uh, seams, the, the tape is going to hold those in over time eventually it can work itself out so just if you screw it in there's no problems it's a little bit more expensive but it's also a better hold and i don't and this is a personal preference but you don't have to use glue on the studs construction adhesive if you screw everything and i put about 25 screw in cr screws in sc screws in screws in 25 screws per sheet uh, a four by eight sheet which is super solid and I can sleep at night, right? Because if there was a nail in there that pops in the middle of the night, I don't know what I would do. I'd go crazy. All right, so let's get started on this first piece. Your beautiful assistant is here to help you. I'd like to introduce you to my beautiful assistant, Sarah. So we're going to use five inch drywall on the ceiling. We're going to screw it in. So your drywall sheet is eight feet long, but we want to we want to break on the stud. So we're going to our measurement is going to be 90 and a half. So I've already marked out most of our studs, but you want to make sure that you know exactly where the beams are going to go, or where your studs are at, because once you cover it up, you're going to need to know where to screw. You want to grab me the T-square? Yes. I'm going to actually score this twice, just because it's five-eighths. It's thick. All right. Actually, when you're taking off more drywall, it's easier to break. Those thin pieces are what get you in trouble. So I just lift this up and I hit it. I give it a good hit and it breaks like, just like that. Get my knife, I go on the back side. Just cut that paper and then it just bada bam, comes right off. Bada bam? Bada bam. In order to get a nice smooth finish, you're gonna take your rasp and you're just gonna run it right over this. Like so. All right, now what I like to do is um, the factory end or finished end of a piece is the end of the board that you're not cutting. 
and this is this is your this is the side that you cut. Now, whenever you cut a piece, you want to put that towards the wall. You want to leave your factory end facing this way, so that when you butt up the next piece of drywall, it's as smooth and straight as possible. All right, so we're gonna have to spin this around. Okay. So if you find yourself missing the stud, just put your drill in reverse. And this thing doesn't engage until it has pressure on it. So it's kind of cool because you can drill and it's not really drilling. But you can't, you can't unscrew a screw out of drywall. So you got to put some pressure on the side and it just kind of pops out here. It brings it out just enough so that you can grab it and unscrew it. Awesome. And then when you go to finish, you just go right over that and fill right. it. So to keep in mind is you never want to screw your factory edge until the next piece of drywall is up oh. because you can blow out the drywall. So in other words, if I screw right here, some of this material can blow out and it will actually impact the flush finish of the next piece. So you first you hang the next piece screw that one in and then come back to this seam and screw on both sides along the seam, which I'll show you in a second. We put can lights in the garage. I like LED can lights, and also I wanted multiple lights in here where the garage would clear the light, so anything hanging down is a problem. But we still have to cut these holes in the drywall. Now I use a roto zip. Now we need to mark these out before we hang the piece of drywall. So I'm going to put a big arrow right here, which is approximately the center of the can light, and then I'm going to measure to the center from the piece of drywall. It's 12 inches. I'm just going to mark. I'm just going to drop my tape measure that was planned. And then I'm going to put a 12 right here. So once we hang the piece of drywall, it'll actually hang just fine because this has a little bit of give. And then we come back with a roto zip, measure out 12 inches, and well, I'll just show you, right? Another thing you want to keep in mind is whenever you're hanging the next piece, you don't ever want to break on the same stud. So this way your butt joints is what these are called, are staggered. This way you get a nice smooth finish when you, fin when you uh, mud, butt I joints. guess, butt joints. And also another thing is people call drywall compound mud, um, at least I do, at least I've been doing it for like 18 years. So drywall compound is the same thing as mud. So when you mud up the walls or you put your drywall compound on there, you want your butt joints, butt joints. To, be, to not be lined up. You want them to be staggered. So we're going to go a little bit shorter on this next piece of drywall right here. So I'm going to break. <laughs> Mark out this light. 12 inches, so that's on point. All right, mask please. Can never be too safe when dealing with drywall dust. Hmm. So this is a roto zip. <laughs> um, yeah, you gotta be kind of proficient with this, but once you learn how to do it, it just makes everything so much easier. It's so much better than having to like measure everything out and cut the exact shape of a box or a light fixture that you're doing. This guy, you just mark it out, stick right in the middle, go to the outside and then go clockwise. And the blade actually follows the seam and works its way in towards your light fixture if you go clockwise. If you go counterclockwise, it'll like spin off into space. So don't do that. Finish the ceiling, so now we can start the wall. Correct. Great, which, and we can now use half inch drywall, which is so much less heavy. So much easier to hang walls. It's half inch, it's mold resistant, and um, we can just use our standard inch and a quarter screws. And now we're finally going into regular two by fours. Yep. So, so what I want you to do is actually go up on the drywall here. You might need a stool. Oh, and mark them all out. And mark out where the studs are at. So we can see, when we hang the top piece first, we'll be able to see where the stud's at. Right. But we won't necessarily see exactly where it is on top. So I just give myself a nice little arrow. Why so not? I can line it up, right? Okay. If you 
you have outlets that are already installed, ideally you want to hang drywall when your outlets are not installed. But if they are installed, that's okay. I know you're probably thinking, oh my god, there's an outlet in the wall, Nick, what do I do? But don't worry, if there's a real simple solution to that. You just gotta get a screwdriver, take the outlet out, and you're gonna angle it, which I'll show you in a second. You're gonna cut a little hole, pull it through, put it on, route it out, screw the whole board on. Let's just, let's just let me show you, it's probably easier that way, right? Okay. Whenever you're messing with any type of receptacle, switch, or anything electric, electric? Dun, 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 bah, bah, dun, dun. No. <laughs> um, make sure you turn the breaker off so you don't hurt yourself. So I'm just going to take these two screws out with a Phillips head screwdriver, number two. And we're just going to pull this receptacle out so it's exposed. So I'm going to take this receptacle and I'm just going to bend it so it's sticking kind of out like a torpedo. The idea is to cut a hole big enough for this to go through. So I want to put this receptacle through this little hole. Do you want to screw this in? Yeah. Cool. So this is a kicker. And what you do is you kick it and you just push it up and it brings the drywall up to uh, meet the seam of the one above. Alright, so now that we pulled the turned off the power and pulled the receptacle to the right, I'm just going to feel for the side of the box and then that's exact. I want to aim for the outside of the box and then go clockwise around the box. If you're interested in any of the products we use in this video, you can find all of them at Lowe's. We linked them below and we wanted to thank Lowe's Home Improvement for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see any of our daily shenanigans, come see us at Nestor's on Instagram, N-E-S-T-R-S. Until next time. See ya. Bye.